why is it that as the streets of Cuba are teeming with protesters and Cubans clamoring for food, resources, vaccines, and freedom or political rights, the self-proclaimed champions here in the United States of the marginalized and oppressed, the democratic socialists of America, have either nothing to say about their struggle in this moment of truth or openly side with the regime against the people of Cuba who are yearning to be more free. Why is that? It's hard to wrestle with. Like you really, you want to assume the best of people and you want to assume that people have good intentions, but it's an ugly truth, not just about politics per se, but the authoritarian impulse. Star Wars has always been clear-eyed about this and it's something I come back to all the time. And it has tried its darndest, this whole franchise, this story, whether it's George Lucas or under Disney, to tell us that our good intentions can lead to incredible darkness in the blink of an eye. We need a system where the politicians sit down and discuss the problem, agree what's in the best interest of all the people, and then do it. That's exactly what we do. The, the trouble is that people don't always agree. Well, then they should be made to. By whom? Who's gonna make them? I don't know. Someone. You? Of course not me. But someone. Someone wise. Sounds an awful lot like a dictatorship to me. Well, if it works. And there it is, folks. I mean, people ask me all the time on panels, podcasts, what are the politics of Star Wars? And I tell them, it is anti-authoritarian, period. The political quadrant tells us all that there is to know about Star Wars politics. There is left to right. There is authoritarian to libertarian in terms of your, your sensibilities, your impulses. We're not talking about the libertarian party. We're not talking about the libertarian party, okay? Authoritarian sensibilities versus libertarian sensibilities. Let people kind of figure stuff out. Uh, let spontaneous order go its own way. Uh, let people disagree, you know, right? Let senators in the, the Galactic Republic dispute and, and argue for days on end about an issue and possibly not come to a consensus, or do they need to be made to agree, right? Like Anakin says. Star Wars has plenty of left values. Let us now vote on Senator Bertoni's bill to fund five million additional clones. Tekla lives in a district that rarely has electricity and running water as a result of the war. Her children can now only bathe every two weeks, and they have no light in which to read or study at night. The Republic has always funded these basic services, but now there are those who would divert the money to the war with no thought for what the people need to survive. It has plenty of right values. Clowns should not be the ones defending Ryloth. How can Cham support this? He knows the people are tired of fighting. We can't go on as we have been. By turning over our weapons, he's made us defenseless. I can't accept that. I've already reached out to my contact to acquire more. Have Sid contact me when she has more to sell. Building an arsenal attracts attention. You better know what you're getting into. We don't have a choice. What it is against is power. It is against power being wielded without boundaries and restraints and an ends justify the means kind of way. It cares about individuals. We're talking about Star Wars here. It cares about individuals and the value of every person, but it's not strictly an individualist story. It's not a tale about looking out for number one, which is a trope about what the average libertarian might believe. Like somebody, I remember was debating this with me on a Comic-Con panel about the libertarian elements of Star Wars. And I was like, you know, Han Solo remains still one of the great kind of libertarian figures of Star Wars, sort of an individualist through and through. He can't be made to do stuff, right? But that doesn't make him a bad person. And they're like, well, he's not a libertarian at the end of the original Star Wars, 1977, A New Hope. He comes back uh, and helps the rebellion in their moment of need and saves Luke uh, by flying in with the Millennium Falcon to shoot Darth Vader right out of the way. And it saves the day. And my response to that was, did anybody make him do that? No. He chose to do that thing. He was presented 
with friendship. He was presented with solidarity with people who he's, he saw himself in their struggle. We see that now more in Solo when he meets Infus Nast and he first gets an exposure to this idea of the rebellion against the Empire. And he has a soft spot in his heart for this struggle. He doesn't like the Empire. Uh, but nobody made him come back to help Luke. If we were talking about the opposite of kind of these libertarian ideals, you might be talking more about different authoritarian forms of government like, like socialism and communism fall within these grounds. Not democratic socialism. We're not talking about Sweden. Uh, we're talking about authoritarian socialism, which always ends up in the pure communist model. Uh, if we were talking about Han Solo in this way, the rebellion would have conscripted his service or they would have taken the Millennium Falcon from him when he was on Yavin 4 delivering the princess and all this stuff to the rebellion. There would have been a moment where they said, for the greater good, we need your ship. It's one of the best freighters in the galaxy, fastest hunk of junk on this side of Yavin, and we need it to fly against the Death Star, and you're gonna need to give it up for the greater good, you know, for the community, for your friends. That's what you want, right? You don't hate people and want them to die. <laughs> I mean, I kid, but like, that's, that's the point. One of my favorite libertarian thinkers, capital L libertarian thinkers, is Matt Kibbe, and he boils down the ethos of the libertarianism uh, idea to don't hurt people, don't take their stuff. And if you are willing to hurt people or take their stuff to help other people or do something for a different constituency that you might like, you're closer to the authoritarian end of the spectrum in terms of your sensibilities and what you think needs to be done to make the world a better place. The champions of social democracy in the US, they met last week with Venezuelan President Maduro because they admire his effort to implement the nationalization of goods and resources in Venezuela for the past 20 years. They respect the ideals behind the effort. They respect the hustle. The ends don't matter. This is why the DSA, the Democratic Socialists of America, are siding with the capital R revolution in Cuba, right? That means the government. That means the people who are currently in power, not the actual people without power. Um, it's why AOC and Bernie Sanders, Ilhan Omar, are mute on what is going on in the streets of Cuba. They have a vision of how the world should work, which is not connected to how it does actually work or outcomes. That matters a whole lot. Again, like Anakin, Anakin is us. Anakin is the average person who when you ask them, do you like government? They're like, yeah, government's fine. I just want it to work. You know, I just want things to, to, to work. I want politicians to do what's right for the people. I want people to be happy and taken care of. Nobody wants their neighbor to be living out on the streets in destitution. They want the world to be a better place and for their neighbors and friends and family to be happy. The question is, what are you willing to do? What sort of lines are you willing to cross? Anakin is a cautionary tale about you and me and anybody watching this video. I have authoritarian impulses. We all do. Like there are some areas where we just believe that things need to be a certain way. They cannot be another way. And you just need to accept what I'm saying as the truth, yada, yada, yada. Parenting is like this. Parenting is a little bit of authoritarianism for what you conceive to be a greater good, which is the cohesiveness of your family unit and also the good, your perceived good of the child. <laughs> It's just really important to remember this. One of my favorite recent books on it is by Anne Applebaum, I think formerly The Atlantic. It's called The Twilight of Democracy, and it is about the authoritarian impulse that lives within the general population. And she looks at a bunch of different social studies that show that one third of the population, they believe in authoritarian ideas and that democracy should have certain limits. And that shouldn't really come as a surprise to anyone. Like when I saw the January 6th event happen, it wasn't a white supremacist uh, takeover of the Capitol. That's a, a media narrative and it's wrong, but it was an authoritarian moment. It was uh, a group of people looking at a leader, believing that he should be in power and that the Congress should not ratify uh, and certify the uh, results of the democratic election and that the process should be reversed for a different good. Um, it is a throwing out the rule book sort of moment, and it is always going to remind me that there will be people in your life who, like Anakin, 
they live within the bounds of democratic norms. They operate in the Republic, in America, right? And they, they tell you that they want to work within that system. But if pressed on it, they might want something else. It's human nature. We want things done. Anakin is you. Anakin is me. There's a quote by Heather Hying. Uh, she's an author. It goes, totalitarianism always flies in on the wings of beautiful ideals. It lands gently, flatters you, and charms you, makes you feel smart for recognizing how beautiful it is. But don't be fooled. It is dangerous. Those ideals are not what they seem. So as we are watching this whole mess go down in Cuba and the Cuban people crying out for not just resources, COVID vaccines, but also political rights, freedom, uh, and we see the people who are predictably silent about this, you know why. And Star Wars to me has always been one of those answers as to why that is. And again, it's not because Star Wars is left or right. It's because Star Wars tilts in the direction of freedom. Hi, I'm Stephen Kent. Thanks for checking out my channel. If you liked this video, please hit that like button, leave a comment. I always try to respond to every single one and subscribe. Hit that button down below so you're getting a notification every time a new video posts. We would love to have you be part of the community and I look forward to talking to you. If you like Star Wars and you're interested in politics, which I suppose is why you're on this channel in the first place, you should also consider checking out my new book. It's called How the Force Can Fix the World, Lessons on Life, Liberty, and Happiness from a Galaxy Far, Far Away. And it is my love letter to Star Wars and my stating of the belief that these movies, these stories, these books, comics, the characters, they offer us guidance on how we can live better lives, be better people, and possibly, by extension, make our politics a little less crazy, possibly even better. I hope you like it. I've put so much love into this book. It comes out on October 26th, 2021 of this year, and it's up right now for pre-order. So hit that subscribe button on your way out. I'm Stephen Kent. May the force be with you. Always.